Your success in business will be directly correlated to your leadership skills. And that is why on today's episode of Profit Made Simple, I'm going to be diving in deep into the six pillars of leadership, mastering your path to success. We're going to be diving in great detail on each one of these so you walk away with tangible actions on how you can step up, grow, and evolve as a leader. Let's dive into it. Our first pillar is the most important of all in our pillars of leadership. So you can master your path to success and it is self-leadership. You cannot even begin to think about leading others until you lead yourself. How you show up every single day matters more than your title, more than the words that come out of your mouth. It is through your actions. So are you showing up as the best version of yourself? Are you a living, walking example of the attitude, of the values that you want from your team and your community? Because this is where it all begins. You see, we get what we tolerate in life. And right now, if some of your practices, some of your habits, some of your attitudes, some of your thoughts are mediocre, then you're gonna have a mediocre team and you're gonna be a mediocre leader. Self-leadership is key. And it shows up in a number of different ways. Number one, great self-leadership means that you're intentional. You don't do anything by accident. Everything is by design. Because it's design or default. We can let life happen to us or we can make it happen. So great leaders, Show self-leadership through intention. Number two, they're aware. Great leaders are reflective. They're constantly looking inwards as to why they made certain decisions and why they responded in such a way. They're constantly doing the introspection, the deeper reflective work, so they can make more informed decisions in the future, but more importantly, so they can understand themselves better, their strengths and their weaknesses. Self-leadership also shows up in growth-mindedness. Now, we've discussed this in previous episodes. We've gone into depth on it. But a great leader knows that they can be better. They wake up every single day with the question, how can I show up as a better version of myself today? How can I grow? How can I evolve? Because they see themselves as malleable. They see themselves as just a small part of their future selves. They know that the potential is unfulfilled and will forever be so. And the last part of self-leadership is they take great self-care. They treat themselves like an athlete with their sleep, with their nutrition, with their movement, with their hydration, with their supplementation. They take amazing care of themselves so they can show up with great clarity, with great energy, with great presence. So great leadership starts with self-leadership. How are you showing up? If you're not where you wanna be right now as a leader, it starts with you. The second pillar of great leaders is that they have clarity of their vision, their mission, and their goals. Now, it's not merely enough just to have great clarity but you need to be consistently communicating this vision, this mission, and these goals to everybody involved within the business. Specifically your team members, but also stakeholders and customers. Team members need to feel the excitement of where the business is growing. They want to be part of something bigger than themselves. They are begging to be led to a destination, and it is your job as a leader to consistently beat that drum and enroll them in this future. Now, the vision, the mission, and the goals, they may evolve, they should evolve, but every time they do, you as a leader communicate this evolution and you get their emotional investment and buy-in. So this way, everybody in the boat can row in the same direction. 
So right now, are you as clear as you need to be around your vision, your mission, and your goals? Have you written it on a piece of paper and just thrown it in a drawer? Or are you communicating it on at least a daily basis to everybody within the team itself? Should be in team email, should be in team meetings, and it should be in those water cooler conversations. The third pillar of leadership is effective communication. And we talked about the importance of communicating your vision, mission, and goals. But it goes well beyond that. It goes well beyond giving powerful speeches or chairing meetings. It's about understanding how to have hard conversations, how to tailor the communication to different personality styles, and understanding the difference between public and private communication. So let me dive into a little bit more depth on each of these points. Number one, great leaders understand that the communication you do in public should be very generous. It should be a lot about the future. It should be very praiseworthy. But the communication in private is more constructive feedback. It's more about how they can improve. It's more on a deeper personal level and talking about how they can evolve and become the best version of themselves. The second part of effective communication is the ability to have hard conversations. They do not avoid difficult conversations, but rather they meet them head on. No matter how hard they are, they have these difficult conversations with kindness, with empathy, but at the same time, they do not retreat. They do not try to sugarcoat it and communicate something that gets diluted. Instead, they talk to the heart of the matter itself. Effective communication also means tailoring your communication to the individual and their personality. Some people just need to be told what to do. But different personality styles need to understand the rationale behind a project, a task, a goal, or even the feedback itself. They need to understand the how and the why. And effective leaders know this. And the last component of effective communication is that great leaders are available. They don't sit on top of their ivory tower with their door closed. But no, they understand that being available to their team and to their leaders is vital for the business to grow. And so they make themselves available. They prioritize it. So if you wanna be a great leader, you need to become a great communicator. Where do you need to improve so you can level up and you can embody this pillar? The fourth pillar of leadership, mastering your path to success is emotional resilience. Great leaders respond. They do not react. They take a deep breath. A pause whenever there might be a challenge, an obstacle, a stress. And these are inevitable. This is the game of business. The bigger your business, the more challenges you have. The bigger the business, the more stress you're going to encounter. But this is where your leadership comes in. How well you combat and then respond to that stress will be tied into your leadership ability. Great leaders... Don't respond emotionally. They're emotionally resilient. They take on board the challenge, the obstacle, and then they construct themselves in a way that responds positively. They don't ride this emotional roller coaster of ups and downs. They still feel it, but they respond in a much more pragmatic and practical manner. So are you as emotionally resilient as you possibly could be? Or are you responding? Are you showing passive aggressiveness and are you losing your cool all too often? The fifth pillar of leadership is decisiveness. Great leaders know that being indecisive, that procrastinating leads to a decision being made anyway. It's just being made for you instead of you making the decision itself. And this is one of the biggest weaknesses I see in so many business owners. 
the inability to make tough, to make fast decisions. Because this is where the real learning happens. We can hypothesize, we can analyze, and I'm not saying that we should be careless, but we're gonna learn so much more by making that decision and then seeing the outcomes of that. Then we can iterate accordingly. And decisiveness is a habit. So right now, if you're indecisive in your personal life, if you can't choose a restaurant to go to, a food to eat, then that is showing up in your business. So you've got to develop this decisiveness habit. And it starts in your day-to-day -day life, and then this will translate into your business life. Our sixth and final pillar of leadership, mastering your path to success, is one of my absolute favorites. It is extreme ownership. Now, this term was coined by Jocko Willink in his book, Extreme Ownership. And what it essentially means is that you, you as the leader, take responsibility for everything that is happening in your business. If your team member is not operating at the level you want, that's your responsibility. If you're not hitting the targets, if you're not growing in business, it's not the economy's responsibility, it's not Facebook's, it's yours. And the quicker you realize this, and the quicker you put your hand up to acknowledge this, the better your business will be, the better you will be as a leader. Admit your mistakes. It's not weakness to admit your mistakes. What is weakness is blaming everybody in everything around you but rather admit your mistakes set a plan of action and rectify really hold the mirror up right now if your business if your life is not where you want it to be look inward now i will say this if you have a team member that is not operating to the standard that you want right now then you need to do everything in your power to get them up to that standard. You need to coach them. You need to train them. You need to mentor them. You need to lead them. But if they still fail to meet that standard, then you need to free them up because it is vision and mission first. We've looked at the six key pillars to leadership. Let's do a quick recap. It all starts with us. Self-leadership. Right now, it's all on you. How are you showing up each and every day? You need to show up as your best self because we get what we tolerate in life. Number two, it's the clarity of your vision, your mission, and your values. Are you clear on what these are and are you communicating them on a regular basis? Number three is effective communication. Are we communicating with our team in the most proactive, positive manner, both publicly and privately. Now, are we tailoring this communication to their personality style? Number four is emotional resilience. How do you show up when the inevitable challenges and obstacles and the proverbial hits the fan? Do you respond or do you react? Number five is decisiveness. Your ability to make hard decisions quickly. Then number six is extreme ownership. I want you to do a little audit right now. I want you to list those six pillars of leadership. And I want, to, I want you to rate yourself out of five on each one of those. Where is the opportunity for you to improve and do the work? Because as I said at the start of this episode on Profit Made Simple, is your business success will be completely aligned with your ability to lead people. So it is one of the best skills that you can master, that you can improve upon. And this success is gonna translate into other areas, not just your business. But you'll be a better partner, you'll be a better parent, and you'll have a more enjoyable and fulfilled life. Now, if you got value from today, I need you to do two things, please. Number one, Give us a like and subscribe. And number two, put it in the comments. Which pillar resonated most with you? Thank you so much for watching this episode on Profit Made Simple. And remember this, you have the ability to shape your life. Adopt these strategies and watch your profits soar.